Hello, 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 and welcome to another episode of the Crazy Town Podcast. My name is Jonas, I'm your host, and I'm here with TNT, Dynamite, the Explosive One, TNT, D-I-N-O-M-I-T-H-T, and we're bringing to you another very, very special guest. We have the, the Queen of England, she's got nothing on this young lady. She was the mother of dragons on uh, Game of Thrones. She's an A-list actor, actress who dated Ben Affleck and Brad Pitt at the same time. She created Dogecoin. She <laughs> is the only individual to ever surmount me in a game of Are You Urban? You have to go back and you got to dig in the crates if you need, if you know to know what that is. Baristas <laughs> call her Natalie, but you can call her Melody Payne. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much for joining Here's us again, Melody. Way. Of course, thank you for that incredible intro. I'm, <laughs> I have all of those things. Fact, yeah. all of it. <laughs> Some of them she didn't even know were she were true about her until <laughs> until yeah. you told her. <laughs> So uh, for those of you who have not been listening to the podcast for a long time, Melody has co-hosted with us before. It was back in episode 30 in 2017. So it's been three and a half years since uh, since you did that. I can't believe we're still doing the podcast. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's incredible. I'm willing to yeah. do anything with <laughs> <laughs> right right Literally. so as always thank you everyone for joining us uh we can uh, go to the crazy uh that is the uh, link directly to our youtube channel subscribe like all that stuff also spotify itunes soundcloud any other place you want to listen to podcasts and uh we thank you for being here uh melody uh you want to tell everybody anything for promotional purposes of you like where they can find you online etc Oh my gosh, I'm so, I don't think I was prepared for this last time either, but that was three years ago and I am again not prepared. Um, my website is melodypain.com. I, I don't know. I'm like a typical, ugh, I'm an She's actor. available for birthday parties, bar mitzvahs. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Yes, right. all of those things. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know that I have anything interesting to say. But well, you I, are, I, you're a working actress. So, I mean, like, I yeah. mean, getting work as an actress, that's a lot of people's dreams that they can't do, so. Thank you. Yeah, no, I've definitely yeah. been very lucky, so. Yeah, that's my life. That's what I do. That's it. That's cool. Are you still, you, are you still out there working? Getting I am, yeah. And... Oh, my gosh. It's been, I mean, it, it's been good. I know it's been, like, a tough few years, but, like, I've been, I just, I've been very lucky. I'm very grateful for where I am. Can you so. give people a brief uh, summary of some of the roles that you have been in that they may have known you from? <laughs> okay, the one that people this. typically recognize me from is this sketch show on Netflix. It's called "I Think You Should Leave" with Tim Robinson. <laughs> I um, love that show. <laughs> you either have never heard of it, or else you're like, "Oh my god, that show!" Um, I hope I don't yeah. jack off. I'm sorry, that's from <laughs> yes. the show. It's from the show. It is. <laughs> it is. I've that's... never heard of it. So, <laughs> right. right. <laughs> Here he is um, quoting ridiculous lines, and I don't even know what it is. So, but you were on that show. Yeah, actually, that um, specific quote is from the sketch that I was in. So. Oh, nice, nice, nice. That's awesome. Yeah. Good, good. Yeah. So, uh, so let me ask you this: How has acting been different during the pandemic than it was pre-pandemic? Has it been like a lot more crazy? Well, definitely. Now that we're allowed back on set, lots of COVID protocols. You get the little instant tests every time you walk on set it's like shoving things up your nose so if you're on a project oh. for five days like eventually you need them to switch nostrils or else you're gonna get a nosebleed <laughs> uh, so that's something that was different auditioning a lot of it's done at home now which is amazing because now i don't have to drive into the valley and you can miss la traffic and still get your work done so that's oh, probably that's the awesome. biggest thing yeah lots more voiceover i work a lot in my closet um oh, i set up awesome. a studio <laughs> that, that's <laughs> and awesome <laughs> yeah that, yeah that's awesome well good i'm glad that uh the pandemic uh, has adapted to your work that you were still able to work so are you are uh, you doing any voiceover work on any up-and-coming movies that you would be able to uh give us a little sneak of sneak preview um you don't have to do a voice you know, or anything but i actually mostly do video games um but i'm not allowed to say which ones because sometimes they are in production for two years and they also, a lot of times, we don't know the names because they give us fake names. Um, 
Yeah, oh. yeah. So I know what my characters look like, but I don't actually know that. Oh, so they'll say like, this character is called Sue Smith. And then when it comes out, it's like Xander, princess of the <laughs> earth mongers. And you're like, oh, okay, cool. Yeah, sometimes they're also, um, during production and development, they end up changing the character name. So I don't know what she'll oh, end up cool. as like a year from mm. now. Um, but I do know what she sounds like. Um, so I do that. I do commercial voiceover and I'm working with, <laughs> this is so random, but Duolingo. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, I'm one of their character voices, too. Oh, are you serious? Like, you're the one that goes, like, Susanna is in La Biblioteca, and then they have to yes. repeat it? But you know, the crazy thing about that is essentially you're selling your voice print to them so that they can take your voice, and they make you say, like, a long-ass list of words, and they, like, oh. will chop it up. You're essentially, like, Siri. Like, they can make you into the next Siri, oh, and they have everything, like, all your voice characteristics available if they want to do that so, Ooh, so they can like make you say actually. yeah they can make you say some really like uh, shady stuff if they wanted to oh. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They now, have you done have you done any video games that have already came out that you could tell us that you were on honestly i don't know because i'm not the best at following up I don't know You're if like, my stuff has come out. Good. She just takes <laughs> the checks. Just give me the money. Yeah, actually, I know if a video game hasn't come out yet, if my agent contacts me and is like, hey, they need you back in the studio. I'm like, oh, okay, they're still working on it. Well, cool. um, but other than that, yeah, you just get the checks and move on. <laughs> Dude, that's, that's really cool that you're doing like Duolingo because I think just about everyone knows what Duolingo is. If they've used it or not, people know what it is for sure. Oh, good. Yeah, I, I hope so. Everybody that's awesome. used it. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah, right. Exactly. Do you get do you get royalties for every user that uses your language? <laughs> I don't. Um but I get commission for like my stuff that airs on TV, I guess. Oh, that's, so that's awesome. more like that's the sweet. commercial world. Yeah. Well, I know I remember from before you speak Mandarin, right? Mm -hmm. I do. Do you do Mandarin for Duolingo or do you just do whatever they want you to do? No, I just do English. Oh, okay. Awesome. <laughs> I know that surprises that's everybody. They're like, wait, what? I'm yeah, like, they're like, no, no, we just want you to do the English good, side. Man. <laughs> cool. Um, cool. I was just curious. What can what could you tell somebody who is looking to get into voiceover work? Mm. What what are some of the steps they might want to take? Ooh. That's I don't really... want you to give away the, the secret recipe or anything. If it's... I don't have one. I'm one of those people, God, I feel so bad saying this, but honestly, like, I never pursued voiceover. People always told me I, like, had a distinctive voice. Um, I know that the traditional route is you make a demo reel and then you submit it to agents, or ideally, maybe you have relationships with some agents, you've taken a class with them, or know them or are referred to them um but i just happened to be in my agent's office he shared it with another one of my agents that i was already working with mm -hmm. and this voiceover guy is like oh like he heard me speaking was like hey can you read some copy for me so i just went into the booth and i read a few things and then he kept sending me more and more and i sort of fell into it um oh, so <laughs> Yeah. I guess just go everywhere and talk and have people hear your voice. Or... Yeah, well, I've heard that voiceover work can be very lucrative, and it's like you you don't have to like show your face. You could like be sitting around and like wearing whatever you want and doing voiceover. Wearing exactly. this, <laughs> wearing a robe. <laughs> this is my work outfit. I could yeah, tell no. if she was in a if she was in a hotel. <laughs> she she like, literally asked cool. me if it was okay if she wore a bathrobe, and I was like, I was gonna ask you if you're wearing a bathrobe. So yes, I am. <laughs> That's Quarantine awesome. Quarantine fashion so. forever. It's great. <laughs> well, well, cool. Well, thank you, thank you so much for sharing on that. Like, I know yeah. uh, people are interested in voiceover work. It's one of those things that, like, you know, you 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 hear about. And we're like, oh, I could never get into that. But if you have a voice, like, it's literally you never know. They could be looking for someone who sounds just like you. So yeah, definitely. Yeah. Cool. Cool, cool. So, all right. Well, uh, let's get into some stuff. Let's talk about some crazy things that are going on in the world. Uh, have either of you ever had any interactions with a cult? I mean, like, <laughs> silence. Bes besides Christianity? <laughs> oh, wow. Ooh, I went there. I wow, went hot there. take. I went uh, there. <laughs> Um, the reason I ask is there was a there was a cult leader in Colorado. This happened just last week. Uh, they a a member of a cult said that he had some friends in the cult, and they were like, "Hey, can we come crash at your place? We need a place to stay." And uh, and then he left to go to the store and came back, and they had murdered the cult leader, and she was in his bedroom wrapped up in Christmas lights with glitter makeup on her face. 
And uh, he was like, oh, this is really fucked up. And and uh, he, he went and told the police and they uh, arrested them all. Wow. Why, why, why did they kill the cult leader? Why it the Christmas not- lights? Right, exactly. I wish, and now see, maybe we can expand on the possible reasons because it did not say. But I do want to, I'm going to share my screen real fast because I do want to show, they have a little picture of the people that did this. So I just want to see if I can uh, get this up on the screen. Cult Louder found. All right, there we go. There they are, right there. They're, they're the, no, the yeah, seven. Those, those are some cult members. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, like I was like, when you see their picture, you're like, oh yeah, they look like people who would murder someone and put them in a room with Christmas lights on them. And they said that uh, that she had uh, they had she had like glitter makeup on her on her too. So I'm not really sure what that did, what that was the purpose. But what happened was the guy went to leave and wanted to take his daughter who was in the house, and they would not let him take his daughter. But they let him leave, and then I guess they were surprised he went to the cops. So and then uh, they got busted for obviously murder and child endangerment and and everything else like <sighs> just craziness that's going oh, on out in the world. Man. Oh so, my gosh. Yeah, so that's why I asked if, uh, have you ever just as have you either of you known anyone who joined a cult or have a, anyone that know anything about anyone anything cult related? Melody's got something. Oh, I- oh yeah. <laughs> Okay, I so I previously oh, I worked for a company. I'm not gonna say the name of it. That's fine. Yeah, but yeah. I left because I was highly suspicious that my boss had previously been involved with a cult. Um like the the crazy one that was all over HBO, um, Nexium. Oh I don't wow. know if anybody's heard of it. Yeah. I think I've, I've I've heard of it, I don't know anything about it. Is but that uh like a, a GERD medication? <laughs> Probably. <laughs> I think I've heard of the drug Nexium. Maybe that's what I'm thinking of. Okay. But, uh, but like, I guess without giving away detail, like, like obviously there was weird things. Ha- like, what gave you the suspicion that he was either in a cult or wanted you to join yeah, a cult you or whatever? Yeah. No, I was never recruited to be in the cult. It was sort <laughs> of like it, it would have been like years before starting the company, and then like me joining the company that she had been involved. But um, oh, at one okay. point, I was sort of doing like sales and like promoting the company to other people and she told me about her training and her credentials and she mentioned this credential called executive success programming she was like yeah you can tell people that i went through this program because it's sort of a big deal and i was like okay cool um esp was the short term for it and i never heard of it but it sounds so generic that i was like okay whatever i'll just tell people right right she went through esp um it sounds like a normal business training program and then this documentary comes out and Executive success programming is like specifically trademarked to Nexium, which is like a, it's a sex cult. Like it became oh, like disbanded because yeah, it oh. was started as like a business trade. It was like a sales training program, but then like the cult at the top was like a sub cult that was like, there was a lot of weird sex shit and like branding stuff that was like oh, the, going oh, on. Oh, that cult, the guy, the yes. guy who was in Supergirl was part know of it. Yes, 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 that one. And she yeah. was like, recruiting other people to join yeah it's so that. wow well yeah and that makes sense you were in la dealing with people and they're like oh hey do you want to join our crazy sex cult and brand people and you're like i think i'm good thanks <laughs> no this is a different company for sure um but just the fact that she told me she had went through that program and was telling right. me to tell other people about it, i was like <sighs> yeah tnt you hadn't heard that. about that about oh. that no, it, it was in the news. It was like in the last what six months that guy, the guy who ran it, got busted because someone finally narked on him and like he was like branding girls with his initials and shit. Like it was yeah. ridiculous. I mean, but if there, <laughs> listen, hold on, wait a minute. Let me wait. Here he comes, like, devil's advocate agree, for the sex call. Agree cult. to it, then it's it's not okay. Mm. <laughs> it's see, we should watch this documentary. It's actually really interesting. So um, were they were they coerced? Is the question. There was a lot of manipulation. Okay, he called okay. them ugh. What? Go ahead. He called, he called them like his slaves. Like oh, it God. was and they oh, called him master. It was like it's like really ugh. Oh my God. <laughs> All right. Anyway. So you, you made it weird. Now it's weird. Now wow, it's weird. that's it's that's weird. well that well see, at least you can like like I think like the good thing that comes out of this experience for you is you're like I'm smart enough to not get sucked into a crazy cult because I just, I heard a little bit about it and was like, no, nah, I'm good. 
<laughs> yeah, I don't know. I just all right. I like. Yeah, I don't know. I felt it, like well, I should be so. creepy. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. Well, good. Good call. So now let me flip it to a more positive thing. If you ever started your own cult, <laughs> what sort of cult would you start? Ooh. <laughs> Whatever gets me the most money. <laughs> <laughs> I would just want people feeding me all the time. <laughs> you would just have like you would just have a bunch of slave cooks that just like here you go melody you here's go. your next <laughs> i think so i'm that a very simple good. person i just want to be fed and wear my bathrobe all day or like you would have like just like like these like people like hand feeding you grapes like in the old like where you're just laying your op open with your mouth open they're like dipping grapes into your mouth like that sort of like cult yeah but probably like instead of grapes it's like chocolate chip cookies Oh, just a bunch of Chris, Chris Helmingsworths just feeding you Oreos all day, huh? Yeah, that sounds great. <laughs> just Jason Momoa's just putting Nabisco treats in your mouth. You know, this kind of reminds me, the closest like, thing I've ever seen to a coat is like uh, one of those pyramid scheme programs. Oh, yeah, yeah. So yeah. I was I was unemployed at the time. I just lost a job and I looked in the paper and it was like sales position. So I go there and I apply for the job and they're like, all right, we're going to have you train with this individual. We get into this guy's car and we go door to door, knocking on doors, selling subway coupons. <laughs> Wait, like a, like a, like one of those books that you're like here for a hundred dollars, you can get $28,000 in savings. One of those books, exactly. but just subway, just subway, just subway. Just subway. So we go door to door in this like expensive neighborhood selling these coupon books. <laughs> And we sold maybe like three of them after about six hours worth of on foot walking through this neighborhood. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Absolutely ridiculous. My feet were killing me. And then we get back to the, uh, back to headquarters, HQ. And there's like a bunch of people like they're throwing, they're throwing a party. It's just bottles of water and everybody's getting excited and they're ringing bells. I made you sell today. Ring the bell for as many as you sold. And they're, <laughs> and they're like, so what do you think, TNT? Do you think you want to join the team? Do you want to be a part of success? Are you ready to make a difference? You sell this many, you can get up to this level. And then after that, oh you move gosh. up to this level. I'm like, dude, this is a pyramid scheme. I said that in the office. He was like, no, we don't use that word around here. Whoa, whoa, like, whoa. Oh, okay. <laughs> Okay. Wow. You hit the forbidden word, dude. He was like, Yeah, like, yeah, I'm not, yeah, it wasn't stupid. And it was funny because actually, like, a couple years later, I actually had somebody come to my door and they knocked and asked me if I wanted to buy it. wasn't Subway coupons, but it was like, Do you want to change your, uh, your phone company or something? Mm. And then he had a trainee with him. And I immediately told his trainee, I was like, Look, man, you need to get out of here as quickly as you possibly can. It's a pyramid scheme. They're trying to take you. And he was like, What, really? And he's like, you, no. you're, you're like, You pulled the guy and get out. You're like, Run. <laughs> I, did. I did. And I feel like that's about as close as to a cult as you can get, man. It, it really it's very cult like yeah. mentality. I'm trying to think if I ever got involved. I had some buddies who back in the day were like, Hey, I'm going to get in that thing where you like buy these knives and then you tell all your family and you try to sell them knives. That. I did okay. I was like twenty, and I and there was this ad for like being a, in a group with like wedding DJs, where like they would give you all the DJ equipment, <laughs> and like and like I didn't know exactly what it was, and I was trying to find a job. I had to drive like uh probably like forty five minutes to this place, and I go into this and it's, it's kind of like empty ish office, like in like a like a complex where there'd be like dentists and like all that sort of stuff, you know, like one of those complexes where they have numerous things. And uh, he's in this office and I'm like sitting there talking to him and, and he's telling me like, yeah, we'll give you all this equipment and you'll go to these weddings and da, da, da. And I'm like, I was like, I was kind of into it. I was like, okay, like I can go DJ a wedding. Like I can make it interesting. <laughs> and then it was, <laughs> he's like, yes, that sounds great. Um, and then all of a sudden, like in the middle of the interview, he goes, okay, I need to ask you something. I'm like, okay. He goes, what drugs do you do? And I was just like, oh okay and like uh and like i was young and i was like oh you know sometimes maybe a little bit of grass or something you know just being stupid and he was like oh he's like oh i don't i don't get involved with that i do meth and i was like and this was like and this was like pre meth epidemic like so it was back like when B third eye blind was mentioning doing crystal meth in their songs and shit and people were like not offended by it um and like and i was just like oh and like, so I left and I was like, oh, sounds good, dude. And like, I, you know, kept it real. Like I wasn't 
thinking he was a psychopath at that point. And I left, got home. This dude called me and called me and called me and was like leaving me messages like dude we got your equipment whenever you're ready you can come pick it up we'll start doing when i was like i would end up dead if i did the, if i was involved with this company so i don't know if it was like a cult a uh pyramid scheme he probably would have like made me pay for the equipment or so i don't know it was nuts but he was yeah he was i was like oh. i'm gonna inject you with meth dude that was his plan <laughs> yeah. he just hires people to start a meth habit yeah he wanted a meth mule <laughs> he was going to load my equipment up with pounds of meth, and every wedding would just be a, uh, a mule ride. <laughs> Make you swallow uh, condoms full of meth. <laughs> yeah, I show up. He's like, swallow this. He has a gun. I'm like, oh, my God. Yeah, and all of a sudden. Sneak it into come, weddings uh, for some reason. Yeah, because... what was that movie? Was it Clint, East Clint Eastwood who became that movie? Like, when he was, like, 85, and he was, like, the, the mule. He, like, got involved with, like, the Mexican drug cartel. Was it, wasn't that a movie? I don't know. Maria full of grace is the only one I know. How, what would you do for your coat, Jonas? What would, you, what, what would your coat be? Ooh, um, I would probably like the food idea is good. I would like, I would like, uh, I would like people to, I kind of like you said, figure out a way to like have people work for me and bring me money. Like, wow. like, like, you know, like, hey, I'm going to start a cult of carpenters and you guys go build houses and work on houses. And I'll just sit in my chair and drink lemonade, and you'll bring me bags of gold doubloons at the end of the day. It's so nefarious. There's, like, no good way to be a cult leader, right? I mean, hence the stigma of cults, right? Can there is there any positive cult? I mean, people love Christianity, but, like, they don't recognize it as a cult. <laughs> is it because of the altruistic nature of Christianity that it's not considered a cult? Or is I just it because think... their belief is true? Well... Okay, without getting too much into religion, I don't want to like get in a religion hunt on this episode. Oh no, dude! I'm I trying feel to get you that on this episode, it it <laughs> like okay. You're Here's the thing, today, one because things that are widely accepted are not considered negative. So like, there's ways that you could look at any religion and think, "Wow, that sounds kind of messed up." But at the same, like, but like with a cult, when you're like, "Oh, we're worshiping the space gods and we're gonna drink poison Kool Aid," now you guys are nut jobs. But like. Because everyone you widely accept the notion of whatever this religion or whatever is, it's people don't think of it as a bad thing. It's like, oh, hey, we're a bunch of friends that hang out and do the same thing. But if you're like killing turkeys and drinking their blood, then all of a sudden you're crazy. You're, you're not religious, are you, Melody? No, know. not at all. Yeah, I don't want to offend you at all. By <laughs> I'm not. I have this like crazy theory that all the gods that people believe in are like up in heaven playing beer pong, being like, wow, humans are so stupid. I can't believe they're like fighting about us. Everyone's just getting drunk together, having a great time. <laughs> You know, honestly, that that's actually the coolest way I've ever heard it described in my life. Like, yeah, <laughs> Buddha and Jesus and like Muhammad, they're all up they're there. They're friends. Just, yeah, they're all just they're up there like friends. we're fight they're fighting <laughs> wars about us down there. That's the Greek Greek mythology approach, actually. It's very, yeah. very similar to the Greek. <laughs> yeah, it's instead of like Zeus and Neptune and Apollo, it's Jesus and Muhammad and Buddha and who, whatever other gods are out there. Every once in a while, they come down here in a human form and fuck a, a human just because they're bored. <laughs> Get <laughs> oh. her pregnant. Never because they can. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, they got to take on the the the, uh, the godlike bloodline. You know what I mean? So, yeah. all right, so enough. all right. I'm going to move on to something else. Have you guys ever heard of the Batman effect? No. Not familiar. Okay. Essentially what it is, it is, it is the ideal that if you have an alter ego, it can almost empower you to be more powerful than you are as yourself. Mm -hmm. So, spoiler alert, TNT, Dynamite, and Jonas may not be our birth-given names. <laughs> so essentially... They are alter egos in a way, you know what I mean? Like, and that's something very minuscule. You know, a lot of celebrities, they go by, you know, they're, they might be whatever. They go by some stage name. And they're saying that when you do this, a lot of people use it to get over their fears. Like, you know, like John Smith is scared to go up and talk in front of people, but Douglas franchise goes up and does powerful <laughs> life provoking talks or whatever. I can't think of that. That's a terrible name, but no, it was um, good. It reminded me but, of right. Emilio Estevez. Right, because right. I don't think that's his real name anyways. Yeah, name. yeah, exactly. Um, so it's like, and like, 
Melody, I figure with you working in Hollywood and Los Angeles with people who are actors, you know, have you come across this of people that like, or have you ever you is I, I I won't ask you if you can you know whatever with your name, but is that do you what do you think about that theory? I believe it. That's like Sasha Fierce, right? Um, <laughs> I've <laughs> I don't have a stage name, but I can understand why people would do it. Why, why haven't you adopted a stage name? I've never thought about it. You know, I like, I sort of became an actor because I like, like being myself. And I'm like, well, I want to do it in every crazy possible imaginary situation ever. Um, so, but there, I mean, like, actors are insecure as fuck. So, I mean, can I cuss on here? <laughs> oh, oh, absolutely. I've been doing it. Okay. Yeah, no, no, it's fine. <laughs> um, so, I can understand if people like want to adopt another persona. Hmm. Yeah. yeah, it's a, uh, it's a, uh, do you now, okay, with being in Hollywood, if you've ever been around anyone who's like famous and has like an alternate, do they, do they tend to go by their real birth name or do they go by their Hollywood name? Like would Brad Pitt or, you know, for example, go by Brad Pitt or does he go by like Stu Grossman, whatever his <laughs> real name is? Um, that's a good question. Now I'm thinking back to like the celebrities I've worked with. Um, it's mostly... Like their manager will call them by their real name, like people close to them, and then right, everyone right. else will call them by whatever stage name they've chosen that's, to go by. That's kind of odd, man. It's <laughs> weird to me. But a lot of times, if they're like A-listers, they're not really interacting that much with like yeah. people like me anyway. They just sort of like keep their distance. Oh, they um, like pop in, do their lines, and get the f out. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. And a lot of times, we're just like with their body double. <laughs> oh, I see. That makes sense. Yeah. That, that actually makes a lot of sense. Um. And it's, it's interesting because, like, what it kind of would go by, like, because the people that have known him a long time who knew them as John before they became mm -hmm. Brad Pitt, everyone's going to call him John. Like, their mom, you know, all those people. But then everyone they meet from that new persona on call them that new thing because that's what they know him as. They don't know them as mm -hmm. the, other, the other name. So yeah, I'm not gonna lie, Jonas. I kind of, I kind of love the, having the the TNT dynamite. Like, it, I will admit that it empowers me <laughs> some, to some degree. Like I, I, when I was streaming on Twitch, which I will be getting back to into very soon, <laughs> mark my words, the TNT Dynamite gave me power. You know, I don't, okay. I don't tell people my real name because I work in a in a field where I don't necessarily need everything that I say on the internet to be associated <laughs> with it. Right. <laughs> so I go with the moniker, and I feel like it, it's very helpful. It's very mm -hmm. helpful. Yeah, and I feel like Joan, like with Jonas, like I feel like. It's like basically who I am on the podcast and our YouTube channel is me. But at times, like at, at times, like we do things like playing devil's advocate for the sake of conversation. You know what I mean? So I may take a stance on something that isn't necessarily what I believe, but it provokes good conversation. It provokes good, like, you know, anecdotes or whatever. Because if me and him are every time, every time we talk about anything, we're like, yeah, I think that's the same thing. I agree. There'd be, no, there'd be nothing to talk. There'd be no substance. So... Yeah. Because I know there's been times like we got we've been done with the pockets and I'm like, is that really how you feel? And you're like, oh no, I f that, <laughs> whatever, you know. And it's like just the um, aspect of that. So I thought that was uh, you know, especially with you know, because they say like yeah, Beyonce and, and Adele is someone else that they they uh, that they mentioned in that in that article. Don't talk about my wife like that. <laughs> you a big Adele guy, huh? I am a big Adele guy. <laughs> she has the voice of an angel. Yeah, an angel. Yes, yes, yes. I've never Do heard. Like uh... her... Go ahead. Be pre or post transformation? Pre. What is I like that? Twenty one. I like twenty one. He won't go is like my favorite song. I love okay. That song. Well, because she, she like really drastically changed her appearance. What in the last year? I feel like. Yeah, she, she looks really different. Weight. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, but because I heard like a long time ago, didn't she um didn't she like hurt her vocal cords or something and couldn't perform for a while or something? Isn't that where she because she disappeared? She was like oh. biggest thing on the planet, and then she just was like. I imagine a lot of singers do. I'm sure she fell fell victim to that. I mean, she put a lot of strain on her voice, but she can sing. Young lady, can oh, sing. yeah. But I saw her with the uh, with the cornrows with the Jamaican <laughs> flag. Yes, I saw that. <laughs> she had cornrows. I wearing did not. That. <laughs> she got she got uh. A little bit of backlash for having cornrows wearing a Jamaican flag like halter top or something. But I mean, you know, she looks good, but I don't know. <laughs> nothing like, seriously, I'm gonna hot take nothing like Fat Adele. Fat Adele was the best Adele. One hundred percent. Skinny Adele was good Adele. Fat Adele way better than skinny Adele. 
as far as appearance or singing or all big picture everything or all of it she was beautiful then she's beautiful now her voice was beautiful then it's beautiful now but it was beautiful then i haven't heard any of her music i don't think since Mm. like has she had new stuff come out Mm. maybe there's something to that huh Oh, Go and you well, lose all the weight, and now you can't sing right. Oh, no. <laughs> she, she had all that like extra momentum to like yeah. be boisterous with her voice. Oh, okay, gosh. or maybe she heard her vocal cords. That's probably the more realistic version. Yeah. We can say, yeah, yeah. I don't know. Look at, Susan, don't know. Look at Susan Boyle. <laughs> what happened exactly. to her? Yeah, what happened I mean, to I'm her? I'm saying she was a, a, a she was a a heavy set young lady, and she sang like a freaking. Me- Mechanic. I don't know. What's yeah. a prestigious job? What's a, a mechanic? Job? She's saying like a mechanic. <laughs> I think that's what they say. Cycle, right? So I, when I think mechanic, I think high prestige. I'm sorry. I'm done. Either way. <laughs> fair. 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 So. <laughs> Adele. All right. All right. That'll be Adele. a that'll be a mm. hot topic for the for this episode, mm. I guess. Call me. Um. So Adele. call you Adele, huh? So. <clears throat> So, uh, you know, people use social media. I mean, Melody, do you have a, a pretty big social media, you know, with being an actress? Do you use social media for work or personal, or do you try not to touch it? I do. Um, I sort of mix business and personal, which I know a lot of people have separate accounts. But I've used it to meet a lot of people um, that I want to work with and just connect with them there. So, yeah. Yeah. It's all right. Well, yeah, I, uh, yeah, I don't use a lot of social media really at all. Um, and then... But like I just recently read that there's the new new iOS. It's epi- uh, it's a uh, fourteen five, I guess, is the new uh, iPhone thing. And with all the apps that come out, you have to st- strictly give it permission to use your data. Which we all know that mm-hmm. Facebook is a giant data farm. Uh, we just did an episode, actually, was it last episode or maybe two episodes ago? Um, are you familiar with Oculus, the VR uh, mm-hmm. headset? They have you have to use your Facebook account for that, and they do ridiculous oh. monitoring, like your hand size, your height, like all this shit. And, and you size. can buy a version that you don't use Facebook with, and it's like five hundred dollars more. So basically, you're paying five hundred extra dollars for them not to steal your data. Wow! But with this new iPhone update, they're pissed off that they can't steal your data because obviously, any free service, you are the product. Mm-hmm. You know, that's it's your data. So they've now put on there. I'll bring it up on here. You probably won't be able to read it, but uh, I'll tell you. Let me share a screen real quick. Uh, Facebook. They have put these ads up on, on the internet, on iOS, only on Apple, not on Samsung, that says that if do you, you give us permission to take your data, if you don't, we may have to start charging essentially for for our service. So essentially what people are accusing them of doing is fear-mongering people into thinking that if they don't give their data to, to iOS, that uh, that they're going to have to unle- give them their data or eventually they're going to have to pay to use Facebook, which Ridiculous. you know how some people are like so obsessed with Facebook. It's like their whole freaking life. Um, <laughs> so question being, I don't, I, I know my answer would be no, but if you had to pay for Facebook to not use your data, would it be worth it to you, Melody? Or Twitter or Or Instagram. Twitter or any. Yeah, yeah. Basically, you could pay, and then they would absolutely not be able to take any of your data moving forward. Is Would you care? Or would you pay for that service? I wouldn't pay. I mean, I don't really use Facebook anymore. So I'm like, if I have to pay, I'll just get rid of it. Um, but Twitter, like Instagram? In- Instagram, probably. TikTok, TikTok a little bit. Um I don't know. I'm honestly okay with them using my data. Okay, this is horrible, and I know my phone is listening. But whatever. <laughs> it's like right there. I know it's gonna yeah, send me all cool. sorts of shit after this. Um, the targeted ads sometimes I've actually found some pretty cool shit. So like they know me Fair. well, and it fucking works, man. Because I look at that <laughs> and I'm like, shit, I do need that. <laughs> I have absolutely saw stuff on targeted ads and been like, oh, that's interesting. But what yeah. I do is I don't click the ad. I, I see the ad. Then I go to my browser and search it myself so they don't get the credit for advertising mm. to me so they don't think it's working. But that really, I go buy this. <laughs> I know, right? I know. The I never said ad, I was a man. The only <laughs> ads I ever get is like, this man was born in March. It's a shirt that says I was born in March. I care about my daughter and my dog. If you step on my flag, that's all I ever get. 
<laughs> if you step on my flag, wait. <laughs> That's all I ever get. I Is it like Americana that. ads? Like like straight up like American heritage? Like we all love right. the USA ads? All right, look. So I'm going to be 100% honest with you. This is some real shit. I was looking for the grumpy Care Bear, right? Because <laughs> Okay. Because I kind of right. feel like I'm a grumpy Care Bear. Like I give a shit. Like I have a big heart, but don't fucking talk to me. I'll fucking... I'll... <laughs> punch you or something i don't know oh. so i was looking for the grumpy care bear thinking maybe i could find a grumpy care bear shirt that might you know fit my persona <laughs> obviously i didn't because what the hell do i look like wearing a grumpy care bear shirt i've been getting i would like to care see that, bear to shirts on my activity <laughs> feed for months i don't want the grumpy care bear shirt i think you need to get it no melody look <laughs> yeah, i would love to see that on you <laughs> Look at me. Do I look like I should be wearing a grumpy care? I mean, you were looking it up, so yes. It was like, it was just like <laughs> twisted, sick, morbid curiosity. It was, I don't know. So, wasn't it? Didn't you say like we were joking a long time ago about when COVID first happened, like getting like a full like uh, hazmat suit to wear out to the grocery store? And oh, did, yeah. weren't you searching it, and it kept coming up in yeah, your? I got hazmat suits for months. <laughs> oh my for gosh! Months I got full hazmat suits. Twenty five hundred dollars. I'm not paying that much for a hazmat. Suit. Jeez. Yeah. Right. I yeah. don't think that important. Um. Have you ever? Uh. Like, and I'm sure that happens. To you I mean like? Where you talk about something with your friends, and then later that day, the, the shit pops up on your. It's that's, like that's, yeah. that's creepy to me. Like it's one thing if it's like my Google history because you know Google monitors yeah. everything you do, but like if I'm talking to someone about it and it pops up, that creeps me out just a little bit. Oh yeah. yes, yeah. Have you ever had something like really crazy pop up in the ads that that like you were like, where the hell did this come from? Hmm. No, I feel like I know where all my stuff comes from. <laughs> yeah, I kind of feel like I do too. Well, what's and funny though is from something that I've looked up. But yeah. TNT, you told me that like those, like, it, didn't you tell me that something weird like this, like, like Japanese food products were popping up in like your in your ads? And then after you told me that, I got one or two as well. Ooh, that sounds good. It was. <laughs> She's like, ooh, what was it? Yeah. It was some video, and it was all in Japanese, and they were like taking this, like it was like a roll-on deodorant, and they were putting it on the skin, and it was just like sucking the blackheads out of the skin, oh, and it wow. looked. Like you're watching the video because you're mesmerized by this because who, who's not? You're like, wow, I wonder if that really works. And you're like, wait a minute, this is a scam. This has got yeah. to be a scam of some sort. Yeah, I was getting videos. It was funny because you mentioned that and I was like, dude, that's fucked up. That's weird. I wonder why that. And then like a week later, I got one. It was like for some sort of like, it was all in Japanese. All the writing was in Japanese. Mm -hmm. And it was like some sort of like really, it was like a hot sauce. And it was just like people putting this sauce on food. <laughs> and it was all, it was, and it was all in, I'm like, what the fuck is happening in my life right now? It's because we were talking about it, dude. Like, <laughs> huh. I want you to get that sauce, man. It's probably good. Yeah. Though. I know, right? I know. I'm all. I'm all like, oh damn, this sauce. <laughs> this sauce I'm, I'm, I'm a Cholula guy myself. Cholula? Oh yeah, yeah. Do you like hot sauce, Melanie? I don't like spicy food. I know that's super weird. It hurts my mouth. No, well, no. I mean, that's, <laughs> I, would be, I don't think that's super weird. <laughs> like, can you do like no spicy? Like even like even hot wings. Like you don't do hot wings. You like do like the bland, like I the barbecue don't. or. Oh my gosh! I think especially for an Asian person, it's kind of weird. My whole family loves it. And I don't know. I'm like sort of a disgrace because I can't handle it. <laughs> they, they shun you. They're like, here's your pot of stew. <laughs> and there's this like on fire and they got your no like, spice. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's a, uh, it's, well, I know like a lot of like Asian cooking is like very spicy. Like oh, it's yeah. like, it's like, let's get it as hot as it possibly can. So you're miserable while you eat it. Yeah. I know. I don't get it. <laughs> My mom will straight up eat like chili peppers, like off the little stem. I'm like, you're insane. Why? Good. Good. Yeah, jalapenos. Mm. Oh yeah, I don't do very much. I do some spice. I could do like minimal spice. TNT, what about you? Do you do super spicy like habaneros? Oh, yeah. yeah, let's go. Let's do it. Why don't you pepper, eat a ghost let's pepper. do the ghost pepper challenge. All right, so this is a little insight into our actual household here. Oh, okay, so, here we go. Yeah, you want? To <laughs> me and Jonas were talking uh, previously about doing something different for content. Like we started doing more of this like live action stuff where we're actually on camera and just like interacting with uh, with the audience. And he brought up, uh, I was vegan for a short period of time, like two and a half years I went vegan. 
uh, mm. recently fell off the wagon. Um, and I, he was like, oh, we should try eating some of the vegan stuff that I've seen you bring into the household. I was like, yeah, that sounds cool. We could do that for the channel or something. Um, well, I went on Amazon and I found um, edible bugs. So I got, oh. well, so I found like, no, don't give me that face. I found like <laughs> crickets, grasshoppers, uh, there's like some mealworms. And I even found like a, a, a jerk scorpion. So they take a scorpion and they wow. turn it into jerky. And I ordered without his, without informing Jonas about it. And I'm like, hey, I got a surprise coming in the mail <laughs> so we can do some content for the channel. And they come in and Jonas doesn't want to eat the bugs. <laughs> so you ate them all yourself? No, I didn't eat them all. <laughs> <laughs> what did you do? They're sitting on the table right They're sitting now. They're sitting on the table right now. <laughs> We're gonna... well, I've had, I've had grasshopper. And... I've had dehydrated grasshopper. It doesn't and... taste like anything. It tastes like, it's just like crunchy. Like if Nothing. I didn't know it was grasshopper, I wouldn't be disgusted by it. It doesn't taste, it just tastes like something empty and crispy. Blech. What about like a scorpion or worms? Like mealworms? Oh, God. That'd be the same thing, dude. I'm amazed that they can make jerky out of scorpion because I'm like, I thought it was just shell. Like, there's meat in there. That's kind of surprising. <laughs> Aren't scorpions just one giant like exoskeleton? <laughs> yeah. Well, I don't know. I guess let me know so, how it is. <laughs> so wait a minute. So wait a minute. So you have eaten bugs before? I have eaten grasshoppers before. Not ants. No, no worms. Nothing else. Nothing. I accidentally ate a bunch of ants. Wait a minute. Wait, oh my on. god. <laughs> All right, well, I guess there's a story this coming. Was, oh, god, this is so horrible. You guys might be the, the first people that I've admitted this to, but Aww. I was... <laughs> it was so embarrassing. Exclusive. I was at my, <laughs> The story's not that great. I was at my friend's, like, pool, and it was, like, getting dark, and I brought pizza. And we were there for a couple hours, and it was getting pretty dark, and there was leftover pizza, so I brought it home. And the next day, it was during March Madness, so I'm like trying to heat up some pizza, but you can't take your eyes off the screen. So I was like microwaving this pizza that from last night and I eat it. I probably had like almost an entire slice before I looked down and I'm like, oh my God, this thing is covered in ants. It was like oh. cheesy ants. <sighs> but yeah. Oh. Le I now, <laughs> like, so were you drinking? No, no I was completely sober. <laughs> she just wasn't looking at it. She was like, <laughs> She was God. so enthralled by college basketball that she was like, ants, whatever. You know, I vaguely, like, remember, like, that, when you said that, like, I've never done it, but I feel like I know someone else that that's happened to. Like, ants have gotten into pizza, and they've eaten it. It wasn't pizza for me. It was, uh, I had a cream soda in a can. <gasps> oh, the sweet, like sugar it, water. And I set it down, and then I came back, and I started drinking it, and after about three or four sips, I looked at it and I noticed that there were ants crawling all around the rim of it. Uh. <laughs> so, yes. Yes, oh, I too, so I too, Melody, have ingested ants. You ate live ants. Mine were dead. They were microwaved ants. Oh, they were cooked. I killed them Delicacy. first. <laughs> Murdered them bitches and then I ate them. <laughs> Alright, so you ate cooked ants. I prefer my ants tartare. <laughs> yeah. Have you, uh, what, do you like any weird foods? I know you don't like, uh, hot food, Mel. Do you like anything else that's, like, a strange kind of food that normal, you know, most people wouldn't think is, like, tasty? Mm. Okay. This is a controversy between me and my sisters. For Thanksgiving, okay. green bean casserole, I like the canned green beans. Apparently that's disgusting. No, really? I, I, well, okay. I will only eat canned green beans. I, I don't love like canned green beans. <laughs> Me too. French I'll eat it right out of the cut. can. <laughs> French cut, French style or cut? Oh, I think I could do either, but I'll just like dump some pepper and salt in them and just eat it out of the can. <laughs> That's exactly what I do. I prefer French style, but like cuts a nice mix up. TNT, what about you? You like green beans? <laughs> I, I never knew that I should have a preference, so no, I've never garnered one. I can eat mushrooms right out of the can, though, and I've done that before. I've definitely mm. watched you eat mushrooms out of the jar or whatever. Interesting. Like. Yeah, I love yeah. mushrooms. Mushrooms are like my one of my favorite foods. When I wait, I just thought. Wait, so people make green bean casserole without canned green beans? I thought that's how it was made. Yeah, I didn't yeah, know that was an option stretched. to be honest. Oh. oh, that would be weird. It would have such like a vegetable-y garden taste. Like, 
I know. I don't want my vegetables to taste like vegetables. <laughs> right. <laughs> you need to be mushy. That's that's what I always say to people, and they're like, they look at me funny. I'm like, I don't like fresh salsa. It tastes too much like vegetables. <laughs> Ooh, green beans mashed up like mashed potatoes with a little salt, pepper, butter. I've never I would totally that. eat that. I would. I would do it. I've done cauliflower like that. I've made mashed cauliflower yeah, with yeah. like that's some good. butter and garlic. It's super good. Super good. Hmm. You like uh? Do you do like sushi? Do you like sushi? Yeah, sushi's good. Do you like the I, kind of, like I've got in? I've just gotten to sushi in the last like probably year, and like I cannot s- stop getting sushi with eel and eel sauce on it. I was God. like, why is eel so GD good? Like, what the hell is going on? The eel, eel sauce is, is amazing. Amazing! It's definitely my favorite. Yeah, I ain't eating no eel, man. It's so good. <laughs> You've never even no. tried it. Oh my god! It's I think it's better than like the rest of the fish. I get yeah, like from, I wouldn't. I get mine from the grocery store that they this, that the guy puts out there, and that's it. All right. No, like I wouldn't get <laughs> like a plate stuff on it. I wouldn't get a plate of eel. Like I wouldn't be like, oh, let me get some eel with some broccoli on the side. But on like on sushi, like I'm almost down to do any sushi because like I have I used to be super picky, and now I found that all these ridiculous flavors that I would probably never eat on my own mixed together mm-hmm. are like bliss in my mouth. Oh, yeah, but I can't get you to eat a fucking grasshopper on camera. That is not bliss. That's <laughs> gross, bro. <laughs> Just saying. You'll eat a fucking water snake, but you won't eat a grasshopper on camera. <laughs> Well, wow. Maybe you've just convinced me to eat to eat dehydrated salty bugs. I mean, I do like salt a lot. Yeah. Like, I'm a... Yeah. You can put yeah. extra salt on them if you want. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Just like, just oh, gross. Are you a, are you a salt fiend, Melanie? Do you like put everybody, salt on everything? Everybody. I like garlic salt. Favorite. You, I thought, oh, I, you I put your that. hand down. I thought you were gonna. Put, <laughs> you put oh, your what? hand down when you said that. I thought oh. you like. I thought you were like had some sitting in front of you. <laughs> You're like, oh, garlic, you went like this. My AirPods keep falling out. I don't know oh. what this says about my ear holes. They're too big. Oh, well, yeah, they don't oh. have different size AirPods. No, um, but yeah, no garlic salt. Favorite seasoning. Uh, and every, do you have issues like if you're like working out, do your AirPods fall out of your ears? Yeah, I can't work out with them. They Oh, they'll just like go sliding across the gym? I think I move my face too much when I talk and it like <laughs> goes into my ears and they pop out. I don't know. That's my theory. <laughs> the classic moving your face too much when you talk <laughs> problem. Mm. We've been, all been, been there. We've haunting all been me there. for years. <laughs> So, all right, well, let me get one more quick story in. This uh, this happened in Houston. Uh, there, was, there was two men who died in an auto crash. It was a Tesla. And they when they found the car, there was nobody in the driver's seat. Oh, my God. So, and they from what they say in it, um, I'll, like, they're not, obviously, there's no picture of the person, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show a picture of the vehicle that they showed uh, here. That's the car. It burn up, obviously. Holy crap. And what they said was they were 100% certain no one's in the driver's seat at the time. And what they were saying is they, they claimed that the Tesla auto drive function was not enabled. So they don't know, like, what the hell happened to the – they were, like, they were like 50-year-old dudes. They weren't, like – it wasn't, like, two teenagers, like, ha-ha, let's get in dad's Tesla. They were, they were grown-ass men. And this happened right around Easter. So, and then I think uh, Elon Musk actually even made a statement saying, you know, something along the lines of like, you know, our uh, autonomous driving isn't meant to be done without anyone in the driving seat. It's like a guided driving. It's not like, Mm -hmm. let Jesus take the wheel sort of situation. (laughs) But like, there's still people sleeping in their Tesla. So, oh my gosh. Have you ever seen that around? I'd imagine with the amount of Teslas out and. Yeah, my roommate has a Tesla, actually. Um, it's great. I make him drive me everywhere because gas is so expensive now. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, he definitely has his wheel, his hands on the wheel almost all the time, unless it's like a really easy curve or it's like a straight road and it's like not crazy traffic. Um, Wait, does he use autonomous driving most of the time? Like, so he'll just like kind of, kind of like, if he's in like tr- stuck in like traffic, he'll just let it drive him through the traffic jam? No, he usually, like, he has his hands on the wheel, and he's, like, paying attention. But if it's, like, really early in the morning, and there's, like, no cars on the road, and it's, like, a really easy straight shot, like, then he'll put it on, like... It doesn't work well? Like, it keeps him in the lane? 
Oh, wow. Yeah, 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 it does. It can detect the lanes really well. Um, but yeah, I'd you definitely angry. still need to be paying attention. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I'd be if nervous they, about it. I would for sure be nervous. <laughs> if they ever came out with a, okay, say they came out with a fully autonomous driving car and it was it was 99.5% chance that you will not die. <laughs> would you die? would you would, would you sleep behind the wheel and no. let it take you across country? Cross country? Cross country? <laughs> I don't know where he comes up with these questions, man. <laughs> it's my weird ass brain, dude. I, I don't know where he comes up with this. But no, like if, if no. they came up with something that was like fairly safe, like mm. but you could and they marketed it as like, hey, you can use this car to drive wherever and you can sleep or you can do whatever. You're you're so unlikely to die. It's such a small percentage. Like you think it would be adopted. So a greyhound. Yeah. <laughs> like I would take a train or something. Like without, well, without like right skeezy now. weirdos trying to steal twenty bucks out of your pocket while you're sleeping. Mm. I mean, it's in your own car. The Greyhound bus, dude. Have you ever taken a Greyhound bus that isn't like a, a charter trip that where you know everybody on the bus? I've never taken a Greyhound. I have. Oh my god. Okay, Greyhound story. Yeah. We stopped. We stopped at a rest stop, and no joke, this rest stop had there were bathroom stalls with no doors on them so i saw my other passengers like pissing right in front of me and i was like this was in california i'm like i feel like i'm like in, in the back like another yeah. country <laughs> yeah it That's was like the high school bathrooms like so... when they don't so you don't smoke in the bathroom they don't have any doors on them Wait, but like we didn't have that our high school did didn't they we went so to the same to... high school. There, the men's room had no doors on the stall. So if you had to go number two, you had to go down to the gym locker room to get a door on the stall. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, it I was weird. Remember that far back. I never went to the bathroom <laughs> at school. I was just scared of it. Yeah, I figured there'd be people in there doing dirty things. So I never pooped at school. I know that. I didn't either. Like, that's why. There was no <laughs> door. You know, I'm not going to, like, let some a-hole walk by. And then you're, you're, okay, when you're sitting down on the toilet, you are so, one of the most vulnerable positions you can be in as a person. Because your pants are down and you're sitting on the toilet. Like, what what, what can you really do if someone runs in and takes a wad of wet paper towels and throws them in your face? Take your hand, grab it. <laughs> Boom. Nobody wants that. Nobody oh. wants that. They could have a gun. <laughs> you throwing shit, you win. You win that fight. You win the fight. I, I guess. You win the fight. I'm just saying. I guess. No one ever took shit to a gunfight, though. So I guess we would have to figure that yeah, out there's later. there's a reason for that. <laughs> they figured it out. Yeah, so, okay, so aut autonomous cars then. Oh, anyways, I was going to say, yeah, the Greyhound thing, <laughs> it's shady, dude. Like, my buddy took a Greyhound when I lived in Minnesota. He took a Greyhound from Ohio to Minnesota, and he had a, a transition at a bus stop, and he said some dude came and sat next to him and, like, literally stole money out of his pocket yeah, while he, he was, like, crazy. a he was like a 20-year-old kid at the time. And, like, oh he, he, I guess he said it was, like, hanging out of his pocket. He'd do, like, reach down and just, like, took it out of his pocket and ran off. And I was Jeez. like, that's fucked up. And like, I don't know, Greyhounds just seem, I don't know. I would weird. not do it again. I have heard of people getting like stabbed on the bus. So I guess, yeah, that's kind of creepy. <laughs> like, what, you, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> were you, now was California. this like just a, just a public Greyhound bus or were you like, were, was this like a specific purpose with people other than yourself or just you were on yeah, the Yeah, no, I was, I was on set like in the middle of California and I was like, oh, maybe I'll just go see my sister in San Francisco. And it was okay. like a one and a half or two hour ride so it was like pretty fairly simple i was like i'll just do that it's cheap as hell it's like nine dollars right, yeah, right we did have to pee in front of each other right so for nine bucks you get to pee in front of strangers <laughs> <laughs> yeah sounds like a no, yeah, yeah. new experience for everybody i'm sure <laughs> right so okay with autonomous cars then what if what about flying cars would you guys ever be interested in flying i am cars? here for flying cars i want hoverboards i want flying cars i want time travel now before i die Time travel would be the worst thing for anyone. I mean, the internet for the public is bad enough. Like, you're talking about going back in time and changing history? Yeah, oh, yeah. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> if there's exactly there's 7 billion about. people changing the history of the world, th every second the world would just be in paradoxal, like, shift. I don't see how that's, that's my problem, Jonas. I'm just saying it's that I want it, okay? <laughs> oh, okay. I got you. Flying cars I definitely want, even though... All right, so I was watching uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson, and he said is that essentially we already have flying cars. Because if you think about the way that the freeways are set up, where they go over each other and they cross under each other, they take you up in the air. We essentially okay. have, like, 
ways of flying. Because even if we were to have flying cars, they would still be restricted to a certain path. And oh, you would right, still yeah. run into the same degrees of traffic or like, you know, the kind of traffic that you would get on the freeway because they're going to be restricted to certain paths. So it's like essentially we have flying cars already with the uh, the techno- the advancements that we've had in, in road work. So I see that. Yeah. Well, cause I can imagine if there's like, yeah, if you were living in a city like Los Angeles or Austin, where there's like million, a million or oh, millions dude. of people and everyone's just crisscrossing in the sky, yeah, trying to yeah. drive around. And Houston is nuts, dude. It's just so many. Oh yeah. Houston roads. has a lot of those overpasses, yeah, yeah, yeah. So. but yeah, I never, I never really thought about that. They would have just like sky lanes essentially. Like I, mean, yeah, I guess you that's its to. element. You would have to. Yeah. You'd have to. So we Melody, already- did you get a flying car? I always imagined it like, you know, Futurama where they just have like cars, like <laughs> sort of, there were definitely no lanes in Futurama. They were just no. like going everywhere. I mean, that would be cool, but I can see how that would become a problem. <laughs> eventually. Yeah. Everyone just crashing and burning like all With over. With no like, restriction, people will just take it way too far. People oh, are yeah. insane. On Have you noticed, uh, have, I know you said you haven't been driving a ton, Melody, but like now that like pandemic traffic is like picking back up towards more like normal levels. I think everyone is forgotten how the hell to fucking drive over the like I've had more craziness on the roads and I don't even drive that much. I work from home. I'm just like I've had more people just like pulling out in front of me and changing lanes and like I've like it is I was like what has happened to people driving? Like have you oh noticed gosh. anyone driving more crazy out there? Mm. Well, yeah, traffic's definitely been picking up. I like to, like, get all my stuff done or my driving done, like, early in the morning. But the thing is, like, when there's no traffic, people drive insane, like, so fast that I'm like, holy crap, something bad's <laughs> going to happen. Um, but, yeah, I think that's the only thing. I don't know if that's different from before the pandemic. but yeah. As a person who does, who does commute on a daily basis, I will have to say is that I definitely do miss that part of COVID, you know, obviously – respect to the people who have lost people during the pandemic but that first week where there was no traffic mm. was amazing yeah and now yeah, it's just like it's back to it's back to business <laughs> as usual you just got to be careful yeah yeah Use for sure. mayors absolutely yeah exactly watch, watch well sense. i think uh i've actually saw an article that like it said that people there were people now that were willing like i said so many percent of people were willing to quit their jobs if their work was going to make them come back to the office because now they want to work from home full time because they've been used to it for over a year so they're like yeah traffic two hours a day <laughs> look, you. Oh, look at these two <laughs> kindred spirits over here like yeah work from home oh my <laughs> gosh well, when I first graduated, I had to wear business casual every single day in the office. And now I'm like, fuck that shit. This is my <laughs> outfit forever. I'm never putting on real pants again. You're going to start going out to the club wearing a bathrobe. Just be like, what? This is the. I've worn sweatpants to the club. <laughs> Not this yet. <laughs> you have different colored bathrobes for like every day. <laughs> I have four bathrobes. <laughs> oh, wow. Oh, that's all right. That's I think that's I wear more each than I've... Day of the week. Huh? That's wear each one, one what? Oh, I wear each one for like a week, and then I'm like, okay, this is starting to smell. So I out. don't think I've ever owned four bathrobes in my life. And you have more than I've ever owned right now. Oh, get into I need to get it. On the ba- I need to get on the bathrobe train, you I do. guess. You do. Oh, bathrobes okay. are kick-ass, dude. Okay. I have yes. one, and I don't wear it, though. <laughs> Fair. <laughs> I'm at work. I work 12 hour shifts too. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's true. So, well, all right, guys, we are, we're at that time already. It's all the time that we have for today's episode already. Um, you know, Melody, thank you so much for joining us again. Absolutely. It was great to have you back. Um, so much fun. We- you guys are hilarious. Well, thank you. And when we do the Are You Urban Live, uh, spoiler alert, we're working on game show type version of Are You Urban. You will definitely be invited back for sure. So do you have anything you want to say or whatever before we, we get going? Um, I just want to say that I think you should eat some crickets. <laughs> oh, and... double pressure. <laughs> crickets with me, Joni. <laughs> Come on. All right. I guess, I guess I'll think about it. Good. Well, I love working with you guys. They're so fun. And I can't wait for Are You Urban? Awesome. Awesome. TNT, any closing thoughts for today? Oh, I just want to thank Melody for coming and joining us. It's so wonderful. Honestly, like, is this the first time that we've ever like seen each other face to face? Yeah, it is. yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So, it is yeah. for sure. It's, it's, so. it's very, uh, it's very sobering to know that there's a real person <laughs> behind the voice. 
<laughs> right, right. <laughs> for sure. So, well, thank you everybody for watching or listening or however the hell you're checking us out. Crazytown.com is go to our YouTube channel, subscribe, Spotify, iTunes, yada, yada, yada. But for Jonas, TNT, and Melody. Oh, right. We <laughs> are out.